Hey guys, what if here, and welcome back to NASCAR 2003 for a 6 to 36. We're going to Bristol today, and I don't know. I don't know why I'm recording. It's it's too late in the day. It's 4 a.m. The lights are on. The neighbors are probably wondering what is happening, but I really wanted to play this, and I did some practicing, and I, I think we're going to have a good time with this. And of all tracks, Kurt, Bristol, great combination. So I, I feel like I have the need to do this while I'm in my peak gamer form. So we're fourth in the standings. Marlins our new points leader. The point lead has been swapping every race. Also, I didn't even notice when I was looking at stats. Marlin has a top five and well, a top ten in every start this year. Of the five races we ran, he's been in the top ten every single time. So no wonder why his average finish is fifth. And no wonder why he's been incredibly difficult to uh pass or you know, run better than. So uh yeah, it makes sense why he's running so well. So uh, he might be the one we have to worry for. Uh, obviously, paint scheme, traditional rubber made sharpie. We've re uh, we cycled back to the to the default one, or I guess the first one of 2002. So we're gonna go with that. There's not a whole lot else to say, so we'll just jump into it. Thank you to my tier two Patreon people as well as my YouTube member support and channel perks. You get early access available as well as channel emotes for my live stream. It's really appreciated. It means a lot. There there's a ton there, over 70. Plus, which I've never seen in my life. Hopefully that continues, or hopefully some that became a member stay, or I don't know. Hope, so, I don't know, but thank you. Let's get into this and see what we can do. As far as car setup is concerned, it's just higher pressure adjustments. I guess that's just going to be the thing we're going to mainly kind of adjust throughout the season. But yeah, for, at least for, for now, that's what we're going to be kind of doing. So tire pressure is 20. That's really the only adjustment. Everything else is just default, as default can almost possibly be. And with that, we're going to have Emeryn take it away. I'm going to try this time to not only disable my face cam for the segment, but also disable my, my mic audio because last part, I think my fridge was like trying to sing and it was making a bunch of noise. So we're going to, we're going to, I'm going to try, we're going to try that and to get us more immersed because we can't have a mm, sound effect in the background with my fridge. I know my fridge is like a main character in my universe, but like, or like as a side character, but we gotta let Emeron have its moments. Like we gotta. They're too good. Welcome everyone to Bristol, Tennessee for today's NASCAR Winston Cup race, the Food City 500, right here on MRN. As usual, 43 cars will start this race, and when they get lined up to take the green, they'll take up more than half the racetrack. Well, that's right, Joe. The fans here love watching this race. There'll be some bumping and banging out there, and this one, you can be assured of that. Tony Stewart is showing the importance of consistency this year. Well, points, points, points. Wins are great when they come, but top 10 finishes week after week are what build your points. Heck, you could win the championship on top 10s alone if you're consistent. Ken Schrader has earned over 20 pole positions during his NASCAR career. Schrader's always been pretty good in qualifying, especially in the late 80s and early 90s. In 1993, he started 8 of 30 races from the front row, and when you're not working your way through traffic, a good finish is a lot easier. An impressive average finish record for Kurt Busch. It's amazing, isn't it? This guy is finishing in the top 10 week in and week out. That makes him hard to beat at the end of the year. Great introduction, no complaints there. And Rusty Wallace on pole, he's trying to go two for two at a track he's pretty good at, so makes sense that he's on pole, but we're gonna see what happens here. Starting last on the field, I don't know why my car hopped there, that's terrifying. But yeah, 50 laps, a little bit of a jump there on the start, but we're good, we're gonna try to get some spots. Shauna Robinson, I'm there, thank you. She at least acknowledged my existence, I thought she was gonna chop me off, but. We're good. I'm still there. Okay. Yeah, Bristol's going to be hard to probably just pass. It's, it's going to be very meticulous. From what I did in practice, it seemed like lap 22 is like the perfect lap to pit. And we don't have to worry about any type of caution glitches. It's just a normal, straight-up race. We don't have to worry about anything manipulating the, the event. Which is really nice. So... 
I'm look. I'm, I'm I was looking forward to this, and it, the, this track was really fun to drive after doing a little bit of practice runs again. So I wanted to, I wanted to just hop into this. I, this is like my third, counting this race right now. This is like my third time I've done this. Too much practicing, or I guess that's like the standard amount of practicing I usually do. But yeah, it seems like pitting a lap 22 is perfect. It's a great undercut number to gain time. So it seems to work out pretty well. But yeah, this track. One of the most quintessential take your time tracks, but we're not really doing that now because we don't have much laps to work with. And luckily, a lot of these people are just kind of giving me the bottom lane. They're not really fighting it. Dale Jarrett's back here, which is not good for his championship hopes. Don't know why he's back here, but a track like this, that's very bad. I only saw one alternate scheme in the pre race ceremonies. That was Johnny Benson's 10 cars, so that's a bit underwhelming. But at least we got one of them. But now we just have to try to set our sights on. Craven, who's being a bit of a problem to pass. I can't really find the right run off the corner to get to the inside. But, ne okay, now he's staying up high, so that's that's an opening. That's not how I wanted to pass him, but I'll take it. Also, Kyle Petty randomly runs good here at this track on this game. I don't know if he did that in real life or what, but it's interesting because it's really like the one track. Jarrett, I was there. Uh, it's really like the one track in the game where Kyle Petty really seems to run well at. But if we can get to at least maybe 20 seconds before pit cycles begin, I think that's going to be a good starting place for just cycling out good. That seems to be like the position I need to be in. So I have a, I, at least I have a reference. And we're making up spots. We're doing exactly what we need to again. It's just all going to come down if we can get down Piro normally without a the AI destroying me, and if our pit crew can just have a normal pit stop. Because that's a lot of what is hurting us, is a whole bunch of different, like, factors. Because we could probably be getting not just fifth place, but maybe fourth or third even. And we kind of just keep blowing it. Jimmy Johnson's back here, that's not good for him. Sterling Marlin, I didn't even focus on where he was running at the start, so I'm not even sure where he's at, but... He's going for a, a record, or I don't know if it's a record. I think that record was broken by Kyle Busch, actually. Jeff Green just hit the wall. Kyle Busch had, like, a record of, like, 10 straight top 10s to start off the season or something. He beat, like, a Morgan Shepard record. I remember that being, like, a stat. I don't I don't remember the number, though. But yeah, we're up to P27. Definitely moving up to the field. Not as fast now as we were at the beginning. What are we doing field? Jimmy Johnson... Stop being a rookie. You're supposed to be a veteran, even in your rookie season. You're, you're not supposed to make rookie mistakes. He was leading the points in 2002, so he like even when he was a rookie, he was like already a veteran. Veteran. I don't know. It's freaking me out. Sorry, Terry Labonte. That's not the first time he's gotten turned at Bristol. <laughs> All right, nice run off turn four. Inside of Ken Schrader. See, for the most part, except for a couple little 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 bloops, we we are making passes normally. I'm not just running through every single car. Again, it's almost like as if Thunder 2 is just that awful of a game to drive. And when you give me a game where the drive model's not that awful, in fact, pretty decent, I can make very specific, like precise movements. What a concept, I know. Jeff Purvis in the not tobacco car. P20. So we're pretty much in the, in the best spot. We're above 22nd like I was wanting to be. Pit stops are going to be happening soon. So we're pretty much we're doing everything we need to. Just have to keep making up spots, keeping the car relatively clean. I was poking my nose in there. Kenseth, he's giving me an opening. I just really, really wish we had Kurt Busch's uh, 2002, you know, win a million dollar car or whatever it was. In this game, in fact, in the beta version of this game, they actually had a placeholder uh, sponsor that, like, they were they were wanting to put that in the game, but I guess they just couldn't get the rights to it. So that is kind of cool to know. At least that was a plan. So a shame. But next lap we're pitting. They're already starting to pit. But yeah, when we do pit, obviously standard four tires stop and everything. So just one more lap around because our pit road is on the front straight away. Alrighty, pit stop time. Just get down there nice and clean. No one hitting us. In fact, the AI aren't even running me over. Beautiful. Four tires stop. Out in the way. 
I, really no complaints with the entry to Pyro. We did everything we need to, and, and our driver didn't get held up by anything. So that was that was smooth. Johnny Benson tried to kill us though. As many times as like 16-1 with a bit of repair. 15-9. We also door Jeff Byrne leaving Pyro, so I guess that's just a Bristol thing. But yeah, we pretty much did everything we need to leaving Pyro, so no real complaints. I mean, a little bit of drifty bit, bit there, but otherwise, not too bad. And we're right there with Gordon, pretty much, so even just our exit speed, we kind of just maintained pace, so it's all looking good. Now we just got to wait and see where on earth this is going to cycle us out. Oh, that's awkward. That's really awkward. Of all people to hit at Bristol, Jimmy Spencer, that's, that's, it's realistic. My, the, the, I didn't even do that. That was Kurt's AI just taking over for me there just to hit him. It was just like, it was a Bristol thing. Currently 14th. So we're definitely cycling out a lot better than we were going into period around 20th, I think. So, or 19th even. So that's all looking good. The power of the undercut at Bristol is very, very helpful. I don't know if we're going to cycle out third. I don't know if Ricky Run, Jeff Gordon are like, first, second, and third. I don't think so because Newman's just leaving period, so... I don't know, we're going to see where we're going to cycle out. So I still don't think everyone has fully gotten through the, the whole cycle. So we got Jeff Purvis there leaving Pit Road. That's not a spot, okay. Good to know. It better not be 10 seconds that was behind. That's kind of... Okay, not, okay, he's saying lead cars are pitting. All right, good, good to get clarification. So I guess we're going to cycle out 7th, which is really good considering where we were entering, entering Pit Road in. Now we just got to see how far we're back from everyone and... I think lap traffic's going to play a factor, too. I just we just don't really know how much it will affect us, and I don't really know how far back I am. I guess five seconds, it looks like. 3 nope, 3.5. Okay, that's... With lap traffic, that is still doable. We just have to get around everyone as quickly as possible. Newman's actually almost giving me the bottom lane there. Couldn't capitalize. I mean, I guess I did capitalize on it. And that's going to be for P6. Gordon's for... Fifth, and I guess Scott Wimmer's fourth. I don't know. We're gonna see when we cross the line. No, Ricky Rudd's for position, so Scott Wimmer is just a lap down car. And Jeff Gordon's staying up high in the corner. He's not even defending the bottom lane, so we'll just swoop on down low, take the spot, a little itty bitty tap from him, but we're good. Top five once again. Now Scott Wimmer does have probably one of the more freshest tires in the field. If I could just, I, I cannot afford to waste time on him. If I can get an opening or if he's not going to give up or hold up the bottom lane, we got to get by him. That's a little bit of contact. We can't ever just get up, go through a race without having the right side damaged a little bit. It's just, I guess it's just tradition now. Damn, that gap is st diminished from us to the, to, to the leader. Under a second. Mark Marlin's second. I think that's Tony Stewart leading, so I don't know where Sterling Marlin's at. But we're right there. I can see them. And lap traffic, kind of like Rockingham, which... Is going to be almost like another race where we're going to win because of lap traffic being a problem, but I will take it. There's going to be not very op many opportunities to try to get the win, but we got to pretty much go for what we can. We don't really have much laps left to go. Mark? I, man, if, I don't know. He's, he's trying to pass Stewart. We're, it just, now we're just kind of in a, almost in a log jam with just so much lap cars, but we finally... Got an opening there on Mark. I just have to nail the corner just to keep that momentum going. Beautiful to the inside of him. P2, he... Oh, he hits the wall. I'm sorry about that. He might even lose a spot. Don't... I'm not going to pass through it like that. No, I will I will purposely let off to give my give myself an actual chance to pass through it. He is still having trouble with lap cars. Oh, we got the lead. I would say that's an entirely clean pass, but we hit the wall, but I never even really touched them, so we're good. Just run away if I can. I don't know. Mayfield's in the way, and he's trying to pass Kimmel. This is just... Someone's got to make a move as I want to make the move. Now, Mayfield makes the move. Mayfield, you better do something because oh, this is just a complete log jam right now. Wow, this is annoying. This is really annoying. Mayfield, if you're going to make the move, make the fucking move. I, I will just do it for you. I'll show you how it's done. Like that, it, it should not be that hard to pass Frank Kimmel. There, that's how it's done. It, it, it did not need to be that complicated. Now, fuel is almost kind of an issue. We only have less than two laps to go, so I don't really think it's going to be that big of a 
of a scare, but... We're definitely low, and apparently I just cannot make a clean pass anymore. The white flag's out. Less than a gallon of fuel left, but it should be enough to make it to the end. We have a nice lead on everyone. 7 gallons, or 0 0.75. We're barely going to make it, so pitting it when I did was, like, oh, it literally perfect. B beautiful! <laughs> no problems with that at all. That was... That was shockingly flawless with that. I, can I even do a... I wouldn't... I'm hitting star. I wouldn't even let me do a victory lane celebration because I'm out of fuel. Kurt Busch was the car to beat all race long. Now this was a race he'll always remember. What a great feeling it must be to win a race in such a dominant fashion. From all of us here at EA Sports... I don't think it was dominant, but... Thanks for joining us today. It, we'll see you next we led, like... Texas. Let, like... Nine or eight laps, I don't know, but I'll take it. If they want to gaslight the race uh, info, then be my guest. But that's a dub. We did it straight up. I mean, lap traffic kind of bail us out again, but that's our second win. I will, I will be okay with this. What did I just see on pit road? Why were, why did I not have tires? That was really weird. I don't. I mean, that was. I don't even know what to say about that. It's just bizarre. Yeah, I just don't have tires. I left pit road with no wheels. What is that? I've never seen that in my life. That's a cool visual, though. That's a good thumbnail. But yeah, victory lane celebration. Yeah, second win of the year. Uh, we get it at Bristol at Kurt's first win. This is a track from like 2002 to 2004. I mean, he won so many times. It was, it was disgusting. Russell Wallace finished second to him a few times there, too. So that was probably... Very annoying to the old school fans. I would probably be in that boat too back then, probably, because I really didn't like Kurt back then. But that we we did it. We got Kurt a dub. Not his first dub, but it's his second dub. I feel good about that one. I, I, when I did my practice. We were really close to getting a leap. It was like, it was cutting it like really close. Sometimes I wouldn't get it. But that's what happens when you give me a normal pit stop. When I enter pit road, the AI aren't flying past me. And when I leave pit road, we're all at equal speed. When that all happens, I can win races. Or at least have a shot. But Todd Bodine finished 10th. And Spencer got 8th. Well, look at the laps led. This has got to be interesting to see how this all looks now. We led the last 8. Tony Stewart led 11. Mark or Rusty Wallace dominated. He led half of it. Uh, Ryan Newman led 2. Sterling Marlin does not have a top 10. He got 14th. He actually has the worst finish as with me uh, now. Like, we were tied with our worst finish of the year. <laughs> so, funny how that worked out. Bill Elliott just led a lap at some point. And we only had one DNF, which was Mike Skinner again, which I think that happened last race. Johnny Benson with a hellacious 34th. That, for him in this game this season, it's been, that's rough. But Shauna Robinson down two laps. I don't know when that happened. Jamie McMurray led three laps at some point. Um, but we only had about 30, 35 on lead lap. I was, I think I was right behind Benson. So good chunk of people lapped for a, a quick race like this. But that's a dub. I don't know where we're going to get a win again. Maybe one lap traffic piece of, uh, becomes a factor. I, I, I'm sensing a pattern. <laughs> If that's the case, then we're only going to win like four races. Like two for Rockingham and then two for Bristol at this point. So next up is Texas. A mile and a half. I mean, that should be well. We did pretty good at Atlanta. So a top ten should be at least possible. And with that race, that puts us up to second in points. Now two back from Ryan Newman. And now we're the first driver to have multiple wins this season. Because up to this point, everybody at least had one win. So I broke the mold. But yeah, now we're just two back from uh, Newman. Marlins back to 26. Mark's 51 back. Dale Jr.'s up there. Rusty Wallace is up there. Dale Jarrett, Tony Stewart. A lot of the normal kind of heavy hitters with this game. Ricky Rudd in his most comfortable spot, 12th, which he's probably been in 12th of, like, the 41 races I've run, run from, like, Thunder 02 and then this. It's got to be, like, 20 races or something out of the 41. He's been, like, in 12th. It's been... I don't know if anyone's going to even track that stat, but it feels like it's a lot of races. He's just been in 12th in points. So, fitting... We get to look at our laps led. We're still not in the first column, but Rusty Wallace has a lot. So we currently have nine laps <laughs> led. And Tony Stewart, yeah, so we're sixth. 
Jamie McMurray led three laps, so he's he literally has more laps to led than Ricky Rudd and Bill Elliott. Uh, what a timeline. <laughs> but, yeah, I couldn't really ask for a better race. And minimal contact. I mean, there was contact. It's Bristol, but it was, we hit people less than ten times. That, I don't know. It might have been like five, but it's, it's good. I, I'm content. Let's wrap this up. Big shout out to your three Patreon supporters today for our Champ 15, Kamikaze Games, Bailey Kerr, Mexican Lake 1986, and Jason Helmer for support again. I appreciate what you guys do for my channel every single month. It does me a lot. Always goes a long way. So, like always, just thank you a ton and, and all that. I really appreciate it. I will see you on next episode for Texas. And just see what happens there. We go from a mile and a half, then do a short track, then super speedway. I don't know what any of these are going to be like, except for maybe Richmond. I think Richmond was pretty. I feel like we were like really good there and like the career mode and stuff but a lot of these i just don't remember very well so um a lot of these are gonna be kind of a mystery until i do some practicing so we're gonna see how that kind of plays out so yeah that's it um yeah i'll see you all next episode see you all later and as always have a good day everyone